Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. We are wrapping up the last part of the Things You Missed in Elden Ring series today. Obviously until the DLC comes out in a couple of months hopefully. And don't worry, that doesn't mean less content on the channel, it just means we now have time for some amazing series coming up. So first things first, getting to Mogwin Palace as that's the area we're covering today. There is a few ways to do it. But the easiest and earliest way to get there is by going through White Mask Vare's questline. I have been told, however, that you cannot physically do his questline if you play on PlayStation and don't pay for the PS Plus subscription, which is really crappy. So if that is the case, you'll have to come here a lot later on in the game using the normal method. And that is by using a portal located in the Consecrated Snowfields. I'll take you through it from the perspective of Vare's questline, so straight away, we'll head up these stairs and grab the map. We're going to continue up the stairs and through the mausoleum first. Then we'll come back down and do the eastern section toward the end of the video. As soon as you've grabbed the map and lit the Site of Grace right here, I'd strongly advise just running past all of these zombies, grabbing the key items that I'll be calling out along the way. They give a pathetic amount of runes and they're just really, really irritating. There's no need to waste your time with them. So straight away, you'll get a smithing stone 7 here. And then a little bit further up, on the edge of the ledge, is a Newman's rune. Further up still, behind this giant blob, is three stanching bolluses. I just realised I've never said that word out loud before. Is it stanching? That sounds dumb. <laughs> Carry on and head right. At the end of this section is a stone sword key. And then keep heading further up, and just before we enter into the mausoleum, you can get a nascent butterfly and eight blood roses. When we get in here, I'm going to summon Black Knife Tish because there is a lot of very powerful enemies spawning out of pools of blood in the ground. These guys can be deadly. Once we take out the first one, just on the left hand side round the corner here, we will find a merchant who sells three rune arcs, five stone sword keys and an endless amount of blood roses and dwelling arrows, along with a few other cool items. So, let's kill him and give his bell bearing to the Twin Maiden Husks so we have easy access to these infinite items back at Round Table Hold. Now turn around and head the other way and you can grab a Lord's Rune. Then a little bit further along is three Smithing Stone 8. Another one of them enemies will spawn behind you, so be careful for him ambushing you. Then jump up on this ledge and you'll get a Ghost Glove Wart 9. You can hop down where there is a ton of zombies here for a great Ghost Glove Wart. Just be careful when killing them all that you don't bleed to death. Now we're pretty much done in here. So just keep heading up, up, up until you are out the top of the mausoleum. And as you're leaving towards the next site of Grace, you'll see a summon sign to go and invade White Mask Vare. I will completely ignore that because I've already covered that during Vare's own video. So Vare's questline and the other three NPC invasions that go along with him won't be covered here because, as I say, they've already been done during his own video, so make sure you go and check that one out as well. Now rest up at the site of Grace and I'll meet you back here for the next part. Now that we've progressed up here from the Dynasty Mausoleum entrance, before we progress on any further, if you do want to complete Vare's whole questline, make sure you go and defeat the other three NPC invaders now because once you go through this next area with me, you'll be locked out of them. You can still kill Vare and complete his questline, but you will miss out on his armor set. Okay, now that you know that, let's head up the stairs and into this next area with an absolute ton of the spiky Albanorix and another very powerful Blood Ninja dude. Once you've taken out all of these enemies, in this chest right at the top, is a somber ancient dragon smithing stone. And now we can head up the lift and we'll face the boss for this area. On my way up, I'm just going to show you the purifying crystal tier. If you mix this into your physic, it will completely nullify one of his attacks. I'm not going to use it. I will show you how to just heal through it. But you can use that as another way to protect yourself from the knee heal attack. I will gloss over the start of the fight because it's very simple. There's nothing too crazy that you have to worry about or that you have to do. 
However, as I get him to about 20% health, this is when he then starts spamming that attack I was on about. He does this three times and you can just heal through it, but every time it hits you, it will restore quite a decent chunk of his health. So you're gonna end up having to deal with about one and a half health bars worth of life. And at this point, he gets some crazy powerful attacks as well. It is very easy to get way too overconfident during the first phase and then just get absolutely destroyed during the second. However, give it a few attempts, he is nowhere near as hard as some of the others that you've already taken out. And once you do defeat him, you will get his great rune and the remembrance of the Blood Lord. Also, we can see Mikola's cocoon here. I am so sure this will come up during a DLC. I swear there is going to be some item and some way to interact with Mikola and go to a different area. It just makes sense, right? We're done up here, so I'll teleport back down. I'll meet you right at the start of the area where we grabbed the map at the start of this video. Now that we're back here, as you head down these stairs, you'll come across some particularly powerful Albanorix and a load of the giant skeleton torsos will spawn as well. Each of these torsos is actually controlled by one of the Albanorix. So do what I'm doing here and do your best to carefully focus them down one by one. Once they've taken a certain amount of damage, their concentration will break and the giant skeleton will disappear. Then you can finish off the Albanorix themselves and the skeletons will also stay dead. That will then allow you to loot the rest of this area including some nascent butterflies, a load of crafting materials, and a rune arc. Then as we come a little further along to the southeast here, you can grab a ton of silver fireflies. And in this little cave, once you've taken out all these Albanorix, will be a golden rune 13 and a smithing stone 6. Now that we've cleared up this part of the area, we'll move further south into the next area. I've now marked a few locations on the map that we will go and loot. There's a ton of combat around here, a load of the really strong red Albanorix that can turn themselves into deadly porcupines, so be very, very careful as you're clearing out this area. Again, there's an absolute load of crafting materials around here, but the most important items you want to make sure that you grab are the Hero's Rune 3, the Drawstring Blood Grease, along with the smithing stone 7 just here. And then around the back of this giant tree, be careful because a load more Albanorix will spawn out of the blood pool. And when they're all dead, you can grab a smithing stone 8. Then we're going to head towards the southeast, clearing out the rest of the enemies in the area, grabbing a hero's rune 4, and then in this cave, the ash of war blood tax and a somber smithing stone 9. You'll be ambushed by even more enemies, so be very careful. Now we're going to start heading even further southeast, grabbing the five blood roses and the smithing stone six as we go, and then we can just sprint past all of these Albanorix and go and light this site of grace. I've covered this site of grace in particular in a few videos previously, because people absolutely love to use this as a farming spot if you're finding that you're a bit underleveled. So I won't bother addressing it anymore in this video. For now, I'll pull up the map and show you that we're going to be exploring the south of the Blood Swamp around here. So, I will meet you there. Once you're back where I am at this giant dead crow head sticking out of the ground, head south and around here is a load of exploding blood geysers that can deal tremendous amounts of damage to you, along with no less than four crows and a ton of dogs. And these are the most powerful crows in the game. Jesus, I died here a lot. And I'm very surprised they didn't make it into the top 10 most hated enemies list. So I will skim over the fights and I'll just call out the main items in this area and obviously briefly show you where they are. So as soon as that crow's dead, right by the broken pillar where he was, you can get a golden rune 13 and a smithing stone 6. Then just up here, once I've taken out the dogs, we can get a golden seed. From this golden seed, we're going to jump off toward the east and we can grab three rock grease, a ghost glovewort eight, and most importantly, the nomadic warriors cookbook 24, which will then allow you to craft swarm pots and roped fly pots. 
and I haven't used them myself, but I'm fairly confident they are essentially a consumable version of the Swarm of Flies incantation, which is insanely good. So for a non-spellcaster to be able to use that is amazing. So yeah, I may have to try them out, you know. From there, we'll start heading back the other way towards the western side of the swamp. And just here by this giant tree trunk, you can get five blood roses. Then just a little bit further along, you'll notice an epic item. But before I have a chance to loot it, I get absolutely destroyed by this crow. So I'll meet you back here and we'll try that again. On the run back, I decided to approach from the north rather than the east this time. So you see, we've just run past the first crow by the initial pillar that we came to. And now we're going to head west and into this little ravine. By coming in here, you've inevitably aggroed a load of dogs. So make sure you're very careful when you take them out. And then you can grab four arteria leaf and whatever loot they drop. Now we're going to head south and barely manage to take out this crow because a dog decides to aggro as well and trying to deal with the two of them at once is very, very difficult. So whilst I am fumbling around trying to kill them, I just wanted to say if you've stuck around with the video this long, then hopefully you're enjoying it. So if you haven't already, please can you give it a like? And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, then you may as well do that as well whilst you're down there, right? Thank you. Once they're dead, we can grab the item that was at the bottom of the tree, which turns out to literally just be a holy grease. So that wasn't worth it. However, just next to it, we can also get a Ghost Glove Wart 9, and we can finally loot that epic item, which turns out to be a Stone Sword Key. I'm now running around trying to figure out where that last crow is going to ambush us from, because it didn't jump down like it did before. And I nearly shit my pants as I walk around the corner and see it waiting in ambush. So we're just going to ignore it, and grab the Halig Drake Talisman plus two. And that's it, we are completely done in this area. So I am just gonna leave him alone and go away and never ever come back. This is a very challenging area. So I wish you all the luck in the world when dealing with it yourself, but I'm sure you've got this. And as always, thank you so much for being here. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.